very recently, I was really exploring that word mistake. We, we use that word a lot and we use that word to beat ourselves up or, or, mm -hmm. or beat up, up for making mistakes. But mm -hmm. I was thinking about that word a bit more deeply and I was like, it's a mistake. If it's a mistake, I get to do a retake. Mm -hmm. It is only a mistake if you miss the lesson. Yeah. And I get to do a retake and do it better. But if I don't get the lesson, I'm not going to do it better. I'm going to keep making the same mistakes over and over. Over and over again. Absolutely. This is Freddie Sanders, Divinity and Performance Coach of Woken Warriors, and you are tuned in to Suave Sessions. <laughs> So I know you like we we've, we've been friends for probably over over 10 years at oh, this yeah. point. It's been over a decade. Over a decade. Um so I know you, but for the people who don't know you, who is Freddie? Who is Freddie? Ooh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> I know. Sit back and listen to this one. <laughs> um well who, who I am today is I'm a lifelong learner. And that's something that I've learned very recently about myself um, within the last couple of years um, that, you know, yeah, I, I am a lifelong learner. And I didn't know that about myself before, um, before 2020. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I was, I'm originally from Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So I'm a Southern boy. Um, in around 2007, I moved to New York City, uh, and I lived in New York City for about 12 years. And during the majority of that time, I, I pursued graphic design. I was a graphic designer. Um, so I was a graphic designer for about 17 years total. Um, didn't get my degree in that. Got my degree, my undergrad degree from Louisiana Tech University in computer information systems which is like IT, basically, mm -hmm. news. Um, and, I, and I majored in that <laughs> because, you know, I fell into the trap of, you know, people telling me, you, you, you better major in something that you can get a job when you get out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's what I did. Um, but I think a lot of people were told that. And so the majority of my colleagues who, you know, all graduated in that same field, graduated and none of us could get jobs. So, um, and there, you know, in the IT field, there are a lot of other additional certifications and stuff that you, that you need and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, I just, I just wasn't passionate about IT work. Yeah. Um, so I've always been in, in, an artist. I've always been a creative. So I went the web design route because I was introduced to web, you know, programming and stuff like that in my CIS curriculum. Okay. So I was like, okay, how can I, you know, take this in a direction that feels more like me, that feels more aligned with me. So I went the graphic design and, and, uh, and web design route. So um, I'm a self-taught graphic designer, or I was. And um, so when I moved to New York, I, I was freelancing for uh, the first part of my time there. And then um, the economy did, did its thing, you know, 2009, around 2009, 2010. So I had to get a real job. So I started working at Bank of America. I was hired by Bank of America um, as a senior graphic designer. Mm -hmm. So that's you know, at the height of my graphic design career, I was a senior graphic designer at the Bank of America headquarters in New York City. So I, I worked in Times Square, which was, it was cool at first, then it was annoying because- <laughs> It's Times Square. It's Times Square. <laughs> it's Times Square. Exactly. <laughs> in New York for a period of time, avoid 
Times Square at all costs. <laughs> at all costs. At all yeah. costs. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so I did that. I was at Bank of America on and off for about eight and a half years. And in 2018, I got to a point where I was like, you know, graphic design is cool, but I don't really want to do this anymore. I want to do something that still allows me to be creative, but I want to have more of an impact in the world. I want to have more of an impact in in people's lives and I want to do something that I feel challenges me and you know utilizes my gifts and my talents to 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 the highest level to the highest degree right and the universe would put life coaching in my path or in my on my radar um so a, a friend of mine who at the time was completing his certification and credentialing process um i overheard him talking to someone else about it at a fourth of july barbecue 2018 and i was listening i was like hmm this sounds sounds interesting so i parked myself and sat where he was speaking and and i just listened mm -hmm. and at that time i was also not only thinking about a career change but i was also i was over in new york i just <laughs> I'd had enough I, I was like you know what my time in New York is complete so I was also planning a relocation so at the same time that I was planning to relocate to Dallas Texas where I am now I was also planning a, a career change so <clears throat> this friend um, uh, I had several conversations with him at, at And um, I was like, you know what? I think this is this is my answer. This is what I was, you know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. So fast forward to uh, so I so I relocated to Dallas in November of 2018. January 2019, I went into coaching school. So the same coaching school that he graduated from, I enrolled in. Um. Is a nine month, very, uh, pretty intense um, nine month curriculum. Um, and is ICF accredited. Uh, ICF is the International Coaching Federation. It's the, the gold standard um, body for, uh, for, for coaching. This is worldwide, internationally. Um, and I completed my certification in September of 2019 and let's see fast forward to uh, about six months <laughs> global pandemic <laughs> boom boom global boom. pandemic yeah <laughs> um, and it's boom. interesting because right it was it, it was technically it was before the pandemic officially started in March of 2020. Around mid-February of 2020, uh, a couple of my mentors from my coaching school uh, recommended me for this coaching opportunity with a company called Lyra Health. So at the time, I, you know, was just, you know, trying to build my private practice and I wasn't really working full-time anywhere. Um, and so that opportunity presented itself. So I applied to Lyra Health and I was hired. Um, I was hired as an emotional wellness coach. So, um, so just- This is before pandemic happens. This was right, right before, like I was, I, I was, I started the interview process right before wow. pandemic started. And wow. then I was onboarded, the pandemic was in full, yeah. So I, I was onboarded with with Lyra in April. So that's when I that's when I started in the in the in the thick of pandemic and chaos. In in the thick of pandemic, and then you know, of course, uh, a month later, George Floyd was murdered. So 
all of these things are happening right around the time where the the conversation around mental and emotional health and well-being is like expanding like like crazy yeah so yeah you know timing wise i don't know know, it it had to have been divine intervention that had me to, to 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 transition careers in this particular career at that time um to have these opportunities show up when they did uh, to, to, and for me to be able to do what I intended to do, which is to serve and to to have a greater impact in the world. So, right, yeah, it's it's interesting because I think we've been inundated with pandemic, and you stop thinking about like all the things that were going on at the same time. And I always say like the Black Lives Matter movement biggest contributor was the fact that nobody was at work Mm. like everyone was home so it was easier to motivate people to like stand up for something because you no longer have the excuse of well i can't be there i gotta go to work and now it's like people are at home you're sitting there you're already pissed off because you're at home it's like you're you're dealing with enough frustrations and then it's like you just have issue after issue after issue like just hitting you and it's it gets to a point where it's like you're fed up And you can't take it anymore. And again, this is before the big go to therapy push really started. So that that started inside a pandemic. But a lot of people weren't really dealing with therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it was for for you. It was a it's a great moment to be involved because there's so much that people needed to get off of their chest. Um, yeah especially like as black men like we just we we don't period like we just we don't and even if we're at home if something's going on we're quicker to like leave home and go work out or leave home and like go to the mall go to a friend's house go to a club go to a bar we're quicker to walk away from an issue and go do something else that quote unquote is our therapy but you get in this moment there is no going away you got to deal with it and you got to deal with you and we weren't used to dealing with self Mm -hmm. so when you're when you're now in this in this new position even outside of just work it's what does your conversations become with friends and and colleagues and just the overall conversation I think this is when we everyone started like talking to each other more. Mm-hmm. You know, I I call it I call it the great pause mm-hmm. um, because literally everything stopped. The whole world stopped, <laughs> and and like you said, you know, we you know many of us were were forced to be with ourselves in a way that we were not used to. Um, I, I had a, I had a different experience with it. Um, for, I, I'm naturally an introvert. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, the, the, the lockdown was bliss for me. <laughs> <laughs> Stay home. Thank you. I've been waiting, <laughs> been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix, here we come. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I say that also in part, um, and, and I, we may get to a little bit of this uh, even later, but um, so a, a, a week after I graduated from coaching school in September of 19, uh, I got into a car wreck. Mm-hmm. And that, that single event shifted the trajectory of my entire life um you know i you know luckily you know and gratefully i was physically okay the other party involved was okay Mm -hmm. um but the the part that that i struggled with for several months after that was the fact that it was my fault i was at fault for Mm -hmm. the accident and like technically at fault are you like yeah 
Um, and so that was the part that was the biggest struggle and it sent me into a depression, one of the deepest depressions of my own life. Um, because I had built these personas and these characters my entire life that said, I can't make mistakes. I don't make mistakes. Mm. I do make mistakes. I need to be punished for it. I have to beat myself up for it. Mm. And so, so when I made that mistake, it took me, it took me weeks to accept that I had made a mistake on that level. Um, so, and, and in hindsight, I probably should have been in therapy myself after that event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, you know, I had just graduated coaching school. I had all these new skills and tools and stuff. I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to coach myself through it. And it was rough. It was rough as hell. Um, so Wait, you try to, you try to coach yourself through a traumatic experience where yeah. you're blaming yourself for the traumatic experience and trying to find a way to punish yourself. Well, no, it, it, it wasn't, I, w I wasn't looking for a way to punish myself, but like I felt that was my story. My story for the longest time is when a mistake is made, first, like we're not allowed to make mistakes. Yeah. It's just not something yeah. That, that I ever really permitted myself to do because, you know, as a child, you know, I was, it, it was always kind of pumped into me, you know, whatever you do, you got to be the best, you got to be the best, you know? So in my head, that created this, this narrative of perfectionist. Yeah. But at a certain point, the perfectionism turned to narcissism. Yeah. Where, where now I'm showing up and I'm not allowing myself to show up fully in, in, in you know, my most authentic self with, you mm -hmm. know, my struggles and my fears and my pain. And like, I was conditioned to, uh, I, I was conditioned to always strive to be the best and strive for perfection and not allow people to see the the struggles not allow people to see the worst parts of me i only wanted people to see me shine i only wanted yeah. people to win um which is it's an illusion like we're, we're never going to be perfect exactly. we're always going to have there's always going to be something wrong and yeah. in the midst of saying we're being perfect you're ignoring the faults so it's like i'm not addressing that but you know outside of that i'm great yeah <laughs> like, well yeah well what i learned in the what i learned from that experience was what i was doing was i was not allowing myself to process right i was so fixated on the 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 outcome and the result of perfectionism mm -hmm. i i never really fully allowed myself to choose and yeah. embrace the process that would get me to whatever outcome, whatever goal I was shooting for. And, 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 and in effect, I, I kept painting myself into a corner until, you know, finally this, this wreck happened and all of those personas and all of that, you know, the, the perfectionist personas and the characters and all that stuff perished. And you know, what's, what's interesting, I, I did an interview, like someone was interviewing me for once, which is it's always fun for me because I find myself interviewing them as they're interviewing me. Mm -hmm. um, but I was talking about how I'm not a fan of social media because that's where everyone's greatest fake life is at. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that people need that because that may be their escape from their life. And my response to that was, well, what happens when there's no social media? What happens when everything crashes down and then you're left with your real truth? How do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that's what you're saying. Like in that moment, the personas don't matter anymore. And right. you now have to deal with life right. and who you are. Exactly. Like what, what happens when there is no escape? 
Right. So and when that, you when you sweep it under a rug and you fall over that rug, now what? Now mm-hmm. you got to deal with this hump of dirt. Yeah. And that's where I was after the wreck. So in effect, my what, what everyone else was experiencing when the pandemic first started, that process had already started for me when I had the wreck. Because I didn't have a car anymore. So I was literally stuck at home. <laughs> by force and not by choice. I, exactly. So I was wow. stuck at home for literally, you know, four or five months prior to the pandemic started starting. So when the pandemic started and everybody else was freaking out, I was like, welcome. Right. Welcome to my world. <laughs> right. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And we're about to have some fun now. Yeah. And so it's so that, so that allowed me to really to really uh, you know, like I, I really embraced these opportunities, new opportunities to to connect you know, and, and, and reach out to people in a way that, you know, I didn't really feel like I could before, or, you know, and people weren't that available before, you know? Right. So I think it was a, it, it, you know, the great pause, as I call it, was a beautiful time to, you know, for me to take myself on in, in a more intentional way. Um, and also to be able to reach out to my friends more and connect, uh, you know, more on that level. Why, why is therapy important? I mean, I, I, I know why it's important for me. Mm-hmm. Um, why is it important in the overall understanding of who we are as people? Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll start by saying that uh, I, I'm not a therapist. Um, You're an executive therapist coach i'm a life coach and i'm a certified life coach and executive coach okay um but this is why i i the work that i did with lyra health so much because they were very clear about distinguishing between coaching and therapy mm. um, i learned an, another model of coaching with lyra health called cognitive behavioral coaching which is very closely you know linked and connected with cognitive behavioral therapy because Lyra Health started out as a therapy company, like they only provided therapy. And then I think around 2018 or 19, they created um, a coaching program. Uh, So when I was hired, I was hired to join the coaching program. Okay. Uh, But again, they were very, very uh, stringent about distinguishing between therapy and coaching and how I make that distinction is in short is therapy heals the past coaching creates the future and a lot of times yeah and a lot of times um, the skills and the tools that are learned in coaching to be able to create the future a lot of times people are not able to really uh you know, effectively harness those tools or, or, or utilize those tools or put these tools into practice because there's something from the past that is barricading them from yeah. you know, health forward. And that's where therapy comes in. I don't think we, as people, I don't think we truly understand the depth of holding on to the past um, to be able to excel in the future. And the way that I'm, I'm grateful that I started therapy. Um, I, I love the fact that I did it because it allowed me to realize things I was holding on to that I didn't realize I was holding on to. Mm-hmm. And the ultimate understanding that there's nothing you can do to change anything that's already happened. It's happened. Like it's there. You can address it on how to move forward in life, but you can't change any of it. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing, there's, there's nothing to fix about your past. All you Mm -hmm. can do is be, know it, realize it, understand it, be better moving forward and just try to have the best life in the future and like present future and continue going the best way that you can, but you can't fix anything that's happened before. 
it's exactly. there. Yeah, yeah. It's a written page in ink. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> and that, you know, <clears throat> um, there's this, you know, word, so to speak, that came to me um, not that long ago. I journal a lot. And so I, sometimes I, I get inspired with these sayings and quotes and, and ideas and things like that. Um, and, and like you, you just use the word uh, fix, you know, fixing the past. Mm -hmm. and, and so one day I was journaling, I was like, what does it mean to fix something? To fix something means to put something that's broken back in its original form. Mm -hmm. But we're not fixed. Mm -mm. So if we're not fixed beings to begin with, then we can't be broken. So there's no, there's nothing to go back to. There's only create and generate a new mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. We get stuck there, and I think it's society sticks us there. It's is someone telling you, you need to go fix that, or you need to you need to fix whatever happened before, or how do you how do you fix your past? How do you you know? It's like the mistakes that you've made in life. Like they're, they're learning experiences. That's it. Everything is a learning experience. It's, it's either something that happened that's good or something that happened that's bad. But now that you've done it, how do you adjust to not do it again? Or mm -hmm. if it's something that's good, how do you do it again and do it better? It's, it's all about like just moving forward in life. Like it's, I, I, again, it's therapy was a blessing. Mm -hmm. because it literally said let go of 38 years of life hmm. and the things that you are upset about or things that you have pain about acknowledge it understand it let it go mm -hmm. how do you move forward yeah yeah and it's really it's not even so much letting all of it go it's it's relinquishing the stories and the narratives mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. like <clears throat> um like even even with with my situation with the wreck you know r very recently i was really exploring that word mistake we, we use that word a lot and we use that word to beat ourselves up or, or, mm -hmm. or beat up, up for making mistakes but mm -hmm. I was thinking about that word a bit more deeply and I was like, it's a mistake. If it's a mistake, I get to do a retake. Mm -hmm. It is only a mistake if you miss the lesson. Yeah. And I get to do a retake and do it better. But if I don't get the lesson, I'm not gonna do it better. I'm gonna keep making the same mistakes over and over, over and over. over again. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now when you, cause we can, we can talk about us and life all day. Mm -hmm. Um, when you be an executive coach yeah. and helping people, you know, guide through their careers, um, how much does a person's personal life fall into their career and how do you make sure that you're balancing both because a place where I felt like I, I truly suffered in New York was not having a work-life balance mm -hmm. it was it was all work all day it was just you're on go all the time and when you are relaxing you're still thinking work yeah how do you how do you get people to balance that yeah that that's probably the one most common um, issue or concern or challenge that my clients come to me with is the work-life balance conversation, especially in in executive coaching. Um, this is a, a little background. So, remember, I started working at Lyra Health in April of 2020. I was with Lyra for two years, and I just left Lyra like two weeks ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, about five months ago, I started working with another company called BetterUp. 
BetterUp specializes in executive and leadership coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you remember when um, when Prince Harry and Meghan Markle moved to the U.S. and Prince Harry got a job. <laughs> the prince got a job. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> BetterUp is the company that he now works with. He's the chief impact officer of BetterUp. Um, so, so yeah. So basically, wait, you're telling me you're you're like what two degrees separated from Prince Harry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Conference call. Hey, you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Didn't know I was gonna see you here. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But that's a, that's a, a really important question. And the, the reason why I bring up BetterUp is because BetterUp's model for, for coaching is called the whole person model. Mm. And I love it so much. When I learned that model, it really resonated. I got excited. It really resonated with me because it's based on this idea that we, we often move through the world and navigate through the world divided. We've, we often feel like, and, and, and a lot of it is conditioning, you know, limiting beliefs, you know, all that stuff. Um, but we walk through the world divided and dismembered. Mm. And we feel like we have to show up in different domains of our lives as different people. The whole person model is, is the process of remembering who you are, taking those fragments and those parts of yourself that we ourselves have dismembered uh, and, and remembering, bringing those parts back together and remembering that I am a whole person everywhere. Yeah. I, I get to show up fully and authentically everywhere I go. I don't have to be a certain way at work and then a different way at home. I get to be who I, who I am fully and completely everywhere I am. So part of it is having that awareness or creating that awareness with clients. And then the other part is learning the tools, you know, for, for, for how to establish boundaries. Like when we, re when we recognize that we're all big balls of energy generating energetic life experiences all the time. Right, right. So when we recognize that, now we can, with more intentional boundaries around that energy, personal boundaries and relationship boundaries with the various relationships that we have within, within our personal lives, within our professional lives, because everything is based on relationships and how we relate to one another. Wow. I find it, for me, I find it interesting. Um, It, it, it there was for a while that saying like i'll sleep when i die mm -hmm. and it's grind 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 like you work as hard as you can as long as you can until you pass out and at one point i was like trying i was adapting that mentality again this is new york i'm adapting that mentality you like you go for it all day every day and then you get a health screening and someone says your blood pressure and stress is way out of control and you don't realize it because you're doing what everyone else is doing like everyone's saying like this is how you gotta go and at that point i'm like this shit's unhealthy yeah. like this is this is not this is not safe. Like, yeah. You have to question why you're doing it. And it's not just, it's not just success. It's not just, you know, I have to make sure I pay my bills. It's it's a mentality that I feel like goes to a place where you're doing it to prove something. And then it becomes who are you proving it to? Mm -hmm. Cause I don't I don't need that. I don't I don't need to work myself to death and then like most of us in our communities do you're like damn near dead at 60 mm -hmm. because you've never given your body a chance to relax and recuperate to get ready for 
the work. Yeah. So I'm not sure you have an answer to this. Why do we push ourselves to that brink only to literally shorten our lifespan? Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know that I have the answer, but okay. I have I, I have some thoughts and okay. uh, I like I, thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> thoughts work. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think you know part of it is is um, it, it's it's baked into our DNA to be very primal. We fall into this survival mode autopilot. It's our default where, you know, I, I got to do what I got to do to survive. Um, and we, we're not like that. Like I said, that's our default. That's our autopilot, right? We don't always recognize or, or, or we're not aware that there's another state of being that we get to operate from. And that's the powerful state of being. Mm -hmm. So there's a primal state of being, and then there's a powerful state of being. The primal state of being is fear-based. Mm. It's in fear. And so when we fall into the primal state, a lot of our narratives are rooted in fear and scarcity. And, you know, we fall into this trap where I need, I need this, I need that. And then when we buy into or subscribe to the idea that we need anything, that means we also have to buy into and subscribe to the idea of insufficiency. Yeah. Which causes the fear of narratives and the, and the, and the scarcity. The powerful state of being is love-based. It's all rooted in love. The, our, our ego self, and when I say the ego self, I'm saying the, I'm talking about the false sense of self. Mm -hmm. it's who we perceive ourselves to be. That's where the stories and the narratives and the interpretations come in. So all of that is fear-based because the ego feeds off of fear. It's trying, to, it's trying to keep you safe. So it creates these narratives and that, that's fear-based to, to keep you needing to, to, to keep yourself safe and protected and survive, right? Yeah, how we're conditioned to be in our in our default autopilot state, in our in our powerful state, and that's where your your higher self comes from. That's where your authentic self, who you really are. But we don't we don't operate from that state of being by default. That state of being happens by choice. Mm. So having that distinction. You get to choose which, because because the primal state isn't wrong. It's not bad. There are moments and instances in life where you get to be primal, where you are in actual life-threatening danger. You know, like if you're crossing the road and there's an oncoming car, absolutely be primal. Right. <laughs> right. You know, keep yourself safe. You know, from getting hit by a car. But not every situation in life is a life-threatening situation you get to make choices from love rather than fear. Mm. So that ties into this whole idea of, you know, falling into this trap of needing to be, needing to be on the go, needing to grind all the time. I have to do this, I have to do that, I need to do this. But that's that's not coming from a place of love, that's coming from a place of fear. Mm. It's coming from a place of scarcity. I have to keep, doing this because if I don't, I will lose whatever, whatever the story or the narrative is. So coming from mm. a, more from a place of love, then you get to be more loving and more compassionate with yourself and honor yourself and honor what your body is trying to tell you when it says, I'm experiencing fatigue right now. Mm -hmm. I, get to, I get to sit my ass down <laughs> somewhere for a minute. For a minute. For a minute. It doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't have to be forever. And that's and that's is is something that goes back to me telling being an entrepreneur is hard because you you really don't have work hours. Like there's no office hours really. 
like is you're always connected to what you're doing either at a at a low level or a very high level you're always connected because you feel like if you don't do it your business fails mm -hmm. which is hard and what i tell people who have like nine to fives and you're in the workforce i respect it what I don't like is that you're sitting on 32 sick days and 15 personal days because you won't take off and take a break for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the same with my entrepreneurial friends, it's like you need to plan a vacation, at least seasonally, to give yourself time to recuperate because we don't have weekends. It's what's a Saturday and a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Like that's that doesn't exist in the entrepreneurial world. So it's now my thing is like really trying to get people to understand, to take breaks, to enjoy life, enjoy accomplishments, celebrate yourself, spend time with your family, spend time with your friends, like give yourself downtime because if not, you're working. And I always say like, you can work hard to be successful for 10 to 12 years, but if you die on year 13, what did you accomplish? Right. Right. Yeah. So it's vacations, right. sick days. Like I, when I was working in corporate America, my sick day was I'm sick of dealing with y'all today. I'm not coming to work. I'm sick. Like I'm sick of dealing with you. Today's my day off. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. It's a mental health day. I was taking mental health days. You know what mental health day was? Yeah. It's a mental health day. I need. I need time for myself. Yeah. Are you gonna be at home? No. I'm not gonna be at home. I'm going into the city, getting some ice cream, grabbing some Chinese food. If you see me in the city, you see me in the city. Mm -hmm. My sick doesn't mean I have the flu. It means it's it's a health day. Right. right. We just have to like re, we have to redefine what these personal days and sick days are for. And you don't have to wait until you're in bed with the flu to take a sick day. Right, yeah. Because I, you know, if if the whole idea is for us to be as productive as possible in whatever our career domains are to me it makes it makes more sense to allow ourselves more rest and downtime and recuperation in order so, such that we can be more productive it's not about running ourselves ragged until we die yeah. and calling that productivity yeah. Like that that is that that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I think that that I was really curious to see, and I think we're kind of starting to see it emerge now, you know, that I was curious to see what would happen as we head into post-pandemic life is, you know, um, how are businesses and organizations and companies gonna how are they gonna shift this this mindset around uh you know ha having you know or, or being more productive like can we can we can we shift that conversation a bit can we bring more humanity into the workplace now that we've had this this global pandemic that affected all of humanity can we because because everybody was talking about you know wanting things to get back to normal and i was like no no can that wasn't normal that was <laughs> that was that wasn't normal. <laughs> that like wasn't that normal. that needed a shift. Yeah. Because it's you 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 realize after years of people telling you you can't do these things from home. Mm -hmm. You can't there's no way you can work from home. No, you can't work at home on Fridays. Like that's not possible. To now everyone's working from home. So it was possible, you just didn't want to do it. Exactly. And now that we're able to do it, it's like sit in this office at this desk for what mm -hmm. like if i can if i can do this and be productive from home let me work from home like folks have never spent this much time with their kids they never spent this much time with their spouses like it's it became it became a world of understanding what's important yeah and sitting beside i hate to say karen but sitting beside karen at work and talking about recipes from the weekend that's not important like being home my kids get home from school that's important like taking 
these turnkey kids away from being a turnkey or a latchkey kid. Like mm-hmm. being away from that now and your parent being home when you get home and you're not taking care of yourself from three o'clock until seven o'clock when they get there. It's different. Like that's what's important. So I'm personally, I promote for businesses a four day work week. Mm-hmm. Like work four days, have three days off. Give yourself a real chance to recuperate. Mm-hmm. Like if you need to work from home, work from home. If you're able to do it and be productive, do it. If you're not productive, I mean, that's a different story. Maybe you need to go into the office because you need you need a babysitter. But it's it's all possible. Yeah, It's a matter of like what is wanted. And I think corporations are now seeing that your employees' mental health is more important than you wanting them to be down the hallway from you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's it's like all of the work that I've done, like with Lyra Health and with Better Up, it, it's all remote anyway. Um, but even with that, you know, having the ability to set my own schedule, mm-hmm. I I was very intentional about you know a, as I went through this process, especially when I was with Lyra, about being aware of my own energy Mm -hmm. um and 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 being aware of uh the 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 toll that my work was was taking on my body Mm. so at a certain point um because at a certain point i was working five days a week like like a normal typical work schedule and then at a certain point i was like you know what i get to have mondays off because I said so. Because I because I say so. Yeah. Because I said so. Yeah. So I gave myself Mondays off, and then I, the you know that I did that for for a few months, and then I was like, you know what? I get to have Fridays off too. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you Tuesday through Thursday. Tuesday through Thursday, I will see my clients, and then Mondays and Fridays. I still do other things, but I do what I want to do because I choose to do it. I don't feel, I, you know, there's not this need or this this feeling of obligation or pressure that I have to do whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I definitely, I'm all in favor of, you know, corporation, you know, more universally shifting this, you know, old, outdated, obsolete industrial age construct of employment and moving to, you know, something that's more holistic and that considers people's humanity. Yeah. Yeah. For for the workforce, in my last question, um, for people, again, in the workforce, and you are working from home now, what are what are some things that they should set up or put in place to make sure that they are still being productive. So I know one big thing was having a separate workspace from your living space in your house so that you're not always in working environments. Um, mm-hmm. Like what are some, what are some things that as a coach you would suggest someone do if they're working from home now? Um, the, the first thing is boundaries establish boundaries with with everyone in your life including yourself um, be aware of your energy be be aware of uh, you know when when your body is like be aware of what's occurring in your body um, and that's that's sort of the other practice is mindful awareness you know yeah I just meditation, but when I say mindful awareness, I'm talking about checking in with yourself. Check in with yourself moment to moment. Check in with your thoughts and your and how you're thinking. Check in with your with your body and your feelings and your emotions and how you feel. Check in with your behaviors and your reactions. Are you being reactive or are you intentionally being responsive? That's mm-hmm. the between mm-hmm. you know primal and that powerful state. You know, when we're in the primal state, we're very reactive because we're in that autopilot. But when you come from your powerful state and you operate within your powerful state, you disrupt the autopilot and you check in and it's like, am I being loving with myself right now? What can I give 
to myself? What can I give to my body today? And I think doing that and establishing boundaries around your energy, establishing boundaries, you know, with coworkers, with managers, with, you know, at home with your loved ones, like it's that co-create those, those boundaries in every relationship that you have so that you can intentionally respond to challenges as they occur in a way yeah. that in a way that's more aligned with who you are as a whole person. Yeah. That's good. Boundaries are important. Yeah. I, oh, that was one of the first things I learned in therapy. Boundaries. Yeah. Set them. And again, it's it's important for the people around you to have boundaries, but it's important to understand why you're setting boundaries and not seeing the boundary as a bad thing. Like right. a boundary is, is a, it's a thing that's going to protect a lot of relationships. A lot of friendships are protected by boundaries mm -hmm. because we let people get too far or do too much and right. we don't necessarily address it. So boundaries are great. I love, I love boundaries now and yeah. I set them and it's like, I have no problem setting them and I'm, I'm more at peace with them in place so fully Absolutely. agree with you there i say i tell people take like, walks oh, i tell people take walks like if you if you're home take walk if you have a dog oh 15 yeah. minute walk let's go let's do this yeah oh i love to get out get in the sun like get some air <laughs> hear the birds like it's just it's all the stuff that you you couldn't do when you were in the office mm -hmm. yeah Absolutely. And I say, I say boundaries, not borders. Yeah. Because a lot of people collapse the two. Mm -hmm. they, think that, they think that boundaries are walls that you build to keep people out. And it's like, no, it's like boundaries are lines that you draw in the sand to invite people in to play. This is how you get to play with me. This is how I value me. This is how I love me. This is what works for me. This is what doesn't work for me. This is how you get to play within these bounds. Right. And step out of bounds, we, we gotta figure out how we're gonna play now. How do we get you back in bounds? If we go if we gonna play at all, because it's, yeah. yeah. it's not a wall. It's not a wall. It's it's not a wall. But right now you're out of bounds and there's a penalty for being out of bounds. <laughs> and once the penalty is lifted, then you know, maybe you can come back into the game. Yeah. But again, it's it's acknowledging how you want to be treated, what you're going to allow and not allow. Because I, I, I have a thing now. It's like the only way that I can be upset with something that you do is if I allow myself to be upset with something that you do. I can correct it or I can, I can acknowledge it. I can tell you about it. Your decision on correcting it or not determines where you're going to be in my life. Mm. But I'm not going to continue getting mad about things that other people do it doesn't help me because now i'm mad you're good like you're cool you're over there having fun at the pool party i'm at home now pissed off while you're at the pool party enjoying yourself what am i mad for right so it's just i don't i i i'm not gonna say i don't get mad i very rarely get mad and when i do i address it with myself and it's like why are you upset yeah like figure out why you're mad and then address why you're mad don't yeah. just sit and be mad at another person. Why are you mad? Why is right. this affecting you this way? Right. And that's that's something that, that that's really powerful. Because so often when when someone triggers us, our, our immediate reaction is, you're triggering me, stop triggering me, rather than going inward and saying, Why is that triggering me? Why am I triggered? I issue the clean up. <laughs> right. Why why am I triggered? Because you're speeding. Why is that bothering me? Yeah. Like you're speeding. You're gonna get a ticket. I'm not. Like, okay. <laughs> you cut me off. Okay, cool. Like by the time you recognize and say someone cut you off, it's already done. There's nothing you can do about it unless you're gonna zoom around that person and cut them back off, which makes absolutely no sense. But people do it every day. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. 
because again there's there's so far down this line we can go and i would love for you to come back and have different conversations because there's a lot i want to talk about um we've had we've had clubhouse conversations um and i think one of the best clubhouse conversations that we had was on toxic masculinity Mm. and there's so much happening right now within that line that i would love to have a conversation with you about um i might have to do a panel on that one and just bring a couple people in and really like dig into it because it's there and a lot of things that are there that are toxic we're not even acknowledging that that's actually considered something that's not healthy yeah so we're definitely going to talk and I mean, uh, make that happen yeah yeah because that's that's a that's an hour-long conversation by itself in oh. my year. <laughs> absolutely if not longer yeah okay I'm, so I'm totally in just let me know when. oh absolutely i got you how do how do the people are people able to come to you individually to hire you for coaching absolutely um okay. my website is the best place to get me uh, my website is wokenwarriors.com uh, the name of my coaching brand is, and movement is called woken warriors so yeah www.wokenwarriors.com um you can find me on instagram uh woken underscore warriors you can find me on tiktok at woken warriors um those are probably the, oh and i'm also on linkedin I'm pretty active on linkedin as well uh, just look me up freddy uh Fred, well, I, i'm going by my government name now frederick okay. frederick sanders <laughs> frederick <laughs> sanders <laughs> working on my phd right now so I, i'm getting on, phd yeah <laughs> so i'm getting used to utilizing my full name because freddy sanders phd doesn't sound all that that all it all, it all had the same that the same zhuzh to it yeah, but that's Frederick, like I tell people, baby, when when I put some initials at the end of my name, it's over. James <laughs> Davenport, whatever it is afterwards, we got a problem. <laughs> Rashad will not answer your calls for business. You're speaking to James, and James bills by the hour. Hi, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> that's so nice. All right, so we definitely want to get people over to you. Um, thanks for thanks for this this is important absolutely this this was awesome this was amazing i knew it would be i didn't have any doubts about that but um i appreciate that yeah i I, i'm definitely looking forward to coming back and having many many more conversations with you many 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 more you got throw throw a third mini in there many 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 (laughs) (laughs) that just makes it sound like it's very prolonged many 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 (laughs) 